Let's identify the elements, the operational elements that we deal with when we handle a cryptographic task, whether it is to keep a secret or to crack a secret. Talking about the fundamental, traditional uh, topic on in cryptography, and that is keeping a secret and cracking a secret. The basic architecture talks about something called plain text, which is the secret in plain language that everybody can understand. Whoever has possession of the plain text reads the secret. The plain text is fed into a box called the encryption box. And into this encryption box, we feed something called encryption key. It's a piece of data that together with the plain text feed into this black box called the encryption box where the mechanism of processing P with the impact of KE create together the ciphertext C. So C is the equivalent of P, only in a different language. If you read C, you cannot figure out what the message in P is. The idea of the ciphertext is that it's the same message as in the plain text, written in a different language so that the adversary cannot read it. Now, the architecture continues with feeding, eventually, C into a decryption box. Feeding to the decryption box a key, a decryption key, which together with C creates back the P. So what we have here is a complete cycle. Plaintext to plaintext via ciphertext. To get the ciphertext, we need an encryption key. To get the plaintext, we need a decryption key. Now, if we envision Alice and Bob, who are the good guys, they are trying to keep a secret. Alice wants to send Bob a secret. And across them sits the hacker, the attacker, the adversary, who tries to discover the secret. Then Alice will write her secret in P, that's how she originally expresses P, will use the encryption key that she has to create the ciphertext that corresponds to the plaintext, take the ciphertext and send it out over an insecure channel to Bob. Now, because it is over insecure channel, the hacker, the adversary, catches it. The hacker reads C. And now, Alice and Bob hope that because the hacker will not have the decryption key that Bob will use when he gets C to reverse C into P, and then read Alice's uh, secret. Because they hope that he doesn't have it, and cannot deduce it, that the hacker will remain clueless. He will hold C, 
he will know that C contains the message he is after, but he will not be able to decipher P. He will not be able to reverse C into P, while Bob will be able because he has this key. Now, first of all, uh, just a reminder. We use insecure channel when we have to. Ideally, we will use steganography so that Alice passes uh, Bob the secret and the hacker doesn't even know that the secret was path, passed, so he's not trying to, to recover. The second best choice is use a secure channel. That if he knows that the secret was passed, the hacker would, would know, he cannot crack the secure channel. That's why it's called secure. And only if we don't have a secure channel, we go to this insecure channel, and then we need the one trick that all cryptography is using. We never invented any other. You protect the secret by rewriting it from P to C, changing the language in which the secret is expressed. And it can be a literal language. In World War II, uh, the U.S. Navy uh, practiced encryption by having a uh, Navajo Indian on two ships. And whatever the message of the captain was from one ship to the other was translated to Navajo Indian, transmitted in the clear, if you only understood Navajo Indian and then translated back to the captain of the, uh, of the other ship, hoping, as was the case, that the Japanese had no way of deciphering this scene. In most cases, modern cryptography, we don't use something so uh, poetic. We use algorithms. The E and the D are algorithms that create the C in such a way that we hope that it's robust enough that the hacker cannot crack it. Now, something interesting about these two pieces of data. For some reason, for centuries of cryptographic practice, it was always assumed that those two keys are the same. That the piece of information that you use for encryption is the same as the key, as the piece of information that you use for decryption. It was only in the mid-70s, uh, that, uh, or in the early 70s of the past century, that uh, some people looked at this and said, and that doesn't have to be the case. As long as we have correspondence between the encryption key and the decryption key, a key correspondence, not equivalence, so that P creates C such that KD creates P, that's enough. They don't have to be the same. And with this idea, they revolutionized the Internet. We will see it later. That is the basic architecture of the cryptographic process for keeping and breaching secrets.